Imagine spending days slaving over a model trying to get everything right from the materials to the texturing and you finally finish it, you post it online and you get zero interest. Not even one reply. Why? Because presentation is everything. If you took a few extra minutes to show off your model in a more appealing render, it'll be much more effective at capturing the viewer's attention. But modeling an entire environment can take weeks. And if you're only into say characters, it's not even feasible. So in this video, I'll show you a super quick workaround by putting your render against a photo background. I'll demonstrate this on a render of a car, but you can use any model you have. The first thing you need to do is pick out a suitable background photo. Now, there are lots of great sites out there like Pixabay with free high quality photos available under the CC0 license. So you don't even need to give credit. Once you've picked something that'll suit your model, open up Blender and add the photo as a new background image. Then change the render width and height to the same dimensions as the image so that there's no stretching. Then you want to match the same camera angle and focal length as the photo. And the easiest way to do this is just to eyeball it, playing with the focal length until you think it feels right. And if the photo has a lot of straight lines, you could check out the add-on called Blam, which makes this even easier for you. Once you're happy with the match, next up is to match the lighting of the photo. This obviously varies, but in this example, you can see that most of the light is coming from the sky so to imitate that, we'll just add a large area lamp. It'll probably require a few more lamps to get it exactly right, but for now it's fine. To make the model feel really embedded in the photo though, it needs to cast shadows. So to do that, we'll add a ground plane, which won't actually show up in our render, but we'll use it later to catch the shadows of the car. Give it a new material, and using the eyedropper tool, match the color of the ground in the photo. This is to make sure the light that bounces off the plane onto the model is actually the right color. It's a tiny thing, but it'll add up. Now, in order to separate the shadows in the render, move the ground plane and all the lights to layer two, but hold shift while you click so that they stay on the first layer as well. Then create a second render layer called ground that uses only the second layer and have it exclude the first. This will produce a render exactly the same as the first, but without the model or its shadows. The last thing we need to do before rendering is give a unique pass index to our model and a different one to the ground. Do this by going to the object panel and setting the model to one and the ground to two. Then make sure you enable the object index pass for the first render layer. Now go ahead and hit that render button, finally. Then when it's done, jump into the compositor so that we can start combining the shadows with the render. Start by adding both render layers as well as the background image. Next up, we'll need to isolate the shadow. So to do this, we simply need to divide the ground layer by the main layer. So add a mix node, connect with the two layers and set the blend type to divide. And make sure you enable clamp to avoid any artifacts on the edges. With the shadow isolated, let's now add it on top of the background image. So add another mix node and multiply the result from the previous mix node by the background image. This will look pretty strange at first, but if you ignore the horizon and the model, the ground shadow actually looks pretty correct. Now we need to use those ID masks so that this effect only works on the ground. Add an ID mask and connect it to the object index pass and set the index to the number two, which we used earlier for the ground plane. Then plug that into the factor of the mix node. And now we've got shadows on our background image. Lastly, we have to put our model on top of this. Remember that we used a different object index for the model as well. So duplicate the ID mask node and change the index of that to one. Then all we need to do is add another mix node connect the ID mask into the top input, the background into the middle, and the original render into the bottom. And there you have it, an easy way to render and composite your model onto a photo background, making it instantly much more impressive. If you enjoyed this video, please press like, and to see more Blender tricks like this one, click subscribe.
Thanks for watching.